Welcome once again to Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Joining you from glorious Alhambra. The skies are clear. We had a little bit of rain yesterday, Vince. I had a lot of rain in London. You did? A lot of rain. We love rain. Actually. It was humid, though. It was kind of sticky. Yeah, but skies are clear a little bit. Glorious day in Los Angeles. Starting to heat up. Starting to heat up. Max Bretos, Vince LaRosa, and uh, the games are back this weekend. We have a stacked show uh, we have a lot of news to get to, but we'll preview Seattle as well. We will uh, get to, obviously, the, the huge news from uh, Monday with Giorgio Chiellini. Some news as well breaking today with uh, Apple TV taking over the essentially all the broadcast rights. So I, I, we just did the coaches show before we did this, and I joked with Steve. It's been quiet around here, huh? Not much going on. But, like, within the last 48 hours, a lot of news coming through. Like you said, Chiellini, now Apple. I mean, what's, what's next? For the season ticket holders of LAFC, according to the news, if you did not hear, you will get a a free subscription to Apple TV. So there you go. You're making money on this thing. And uh, it is. uh, we'll see where it goes from there. To see LAFC and all the MLS players, uh, all the teams, it's going to change somewhat. Us at KCOP, in all likelihood, this is our last season calling those games. So uh, let's finish strong. Let's do it together. We're very excited about that. We don't know what tomorrow will look like, but it sounds very exciting because it's Apple. You know, people, how many, look, all the, our huge production staff, how many people have Apple phones here? Uh, right? Oh. Uh, look at that. An, Actually, we, uh, we, an iBook. We force everyone to because we don't like those green bubbles. <laughs> it just drives me nuts. Yes. It's on my rider. Whatever you use. I mean, the phones are so you advanced. Have Apple Plus? I have Apple Plus already. I have Apple Plus. Well, that's where you see Ted Lasso. Yes. So if you're a soccer fan, you got to watch Ted Lasso, right? Uh, yeah, Even though it feels pretty, more like East Enders to me these days. Prerequisite. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, oh, uh, the Mark Ronson show was on Apple. That the was Mark worth Ronson getting. Show was great. Check that out. That Mark was like, what sound? The sound. I, of, I can't. Sound, I have no recollection. Sound of music. Sound <laughs> of music is not it. But it's very good. Maybe Apple has the uh, the movie rights for Sound of Music. I went Classic into it. Classic film. Not a big Mark Ronson fan. Came out of it a big Mark Ronson. Fan. So we both recommend that. Just check Mark Ronson show. Uh, uh, they have this new dinosaur show with uh, John Favreau's done. It's a uh, pretty. Eye opening. Oh, with Attenborough? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Got to go. Got to go with that. You can't do a dinosaur show without David Attenborough, right? Yeah, no. Don't do it. No. I, I could see it. It's welling up in you. You <laughs> so badly want to do it in a person. I know, but he just cornered the market. So, like, if anyone does something uh, wildlife, even a wildlife that doesn't what exist, ca- what kind of nature Attenborough sh- gets the gig. What kind of nature, like, gig would you do? Like, would, what would you be doing? If he's dinosaurs and, and stuff like that, what would yours be? I would like to show the dark side of nature. I go, oh. The three-legged, I'll do it in his voice, maybe like a South African voice. The three-legged wildebeest born barely has a shot here in the hot savanna in this August sun. And the pack of lions has spotted its kill. They go to the, p- the path of least resistance and attack the three-legged wildebeest. You there went we from <laughs> South African for a hot beat just to your normal voice. I see a lot of people laughing there. It was good, right? You'd watch that show, right? Are they laughing at you or with you, though? They're laughing at me. Yeah. But just food for thought, if you want a voiceover for a nature show, I am available. Giorgio Chiellini <laughs> is... <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Everything's changing very quickly in my because, world. Well, let's just put a bow on the Apple. We can't give you a lot of details because there still is not a there's lot not of a lot. Sorry, I didn't want to skip uh, all Which there. I think is interesting because... It's a 10-year deal. It, yes, uh, that's the only detail that really is solid out there. It's yeah. 10 years, so it's a long time. No local broadcasts, no blackouts, which is, your, which is, this is a big opportunity for Apple to... Mm-hmm. Get involved in sports. They do show baseball, but this is, uh, we'll get more information. Uh, I'm looking for more information. You're looking for more information. Right. We're all under this. I think deep down you hope that it helps the profile of this league. It's a great league, but it still gets so many shots at it. I don't understand why. Yeah. I've seen it with this national team. Well, no, two, two things. Here's what I want deep down. Get creative. Like, take the opportunity that's laid out in front of you. It's a 10-year deal, so you got a lot of runway there. And two, bring in the soccer people. Bring in the soccer Let's people. Let's stop doing what the NFL does. Let's stop doing what the NBA does. It that feels very nfl though, when you say that. It this does. Deal. It does, but I'm just saying, like, if you have this wide berth and you have this big runway to do something, let's do something creative. Let's not just go back to the same old well, because obviously it's not working. Yeah, but I don't – try not to – I always found that soccer, when it comes to experimentation, soccer always – takes the brunt of it and it should be just showed for the sport Mm -hmm. the storytelling it's all there we have compelling players we have compelling clubs really get into that without getting too kitschy with uh you know look at this and this guy's pants fell down and it's hilarious ha ha uh that kind of stuff that we can we can roll into because this there's so much potential here and 
I know I speak for Vince. We all like to be involved with that, and it's a, it's a, it's a long runway, as yeah. you say. Call me Apple. Call me Apple. I was thinking of something else. I already have your phone. You already have my number. Yes. This is the thing with soccer before we do it. With soccer, experimentation, and when the World Cup rolls around, they want you have to feel the heavy burden of the weight of what the world has done wrong. Like I remember when Brazil hosted it and ESPN when I was working for, they had these really depressing stories about this Chilean team. And it, it was fine. It was historical. But you're like, you felt terrible. Mm -hmm. By the time you watch the World Cup, you got to – and it, it's far from perfect. And obviously this World Cup has a lot of baggage. But it's something you want to watch these games and enjoy it because it's uh, – we don't get those times enough. As yeah, you got you got to contrast it. You got to have the good and the bad. That's what yep. football is all about. That's what makes it so compelling. That's why it's, we're so passionate about it. It's not all rosy. Yeah. See, you said we were going to talk about Apple TV for a couple minutes, but I know, see, we, well, it's too interesting. That's what we do. We just we got to save some time. Will Kuntz, who, uh, right, uh, serving under John Thorrington as a uh, part of this executive crew with the team building, uh, with the general management. He will be joining us to talk about Giorgio Chiellini. And the news broke yesterday. It wasn't a very well-kept secret. We knew it was out there. Uh, it was officially stamped by LAFC uh, on all their social media accounts. One of the rare times where you and I knew the secret for a long time. Yes. Because you guys never believe us. You think we know like who the next DP is? No clue. No clue. Tried to, tried to, I tried to fish around today. Couldn't find anything out. No. But we did know about Chiellini. But there's something. They're working hard. And Chiellini, we'll talk to Will about how it happened. It's a really interesting story. This is, uh, you know, he's not going to be a DP. Um, he, uh, he is also a guy that um, is uh, going to come in at a, a TAM deal, so which means it doesn't exceed. Does not exceed 1.6 million. 1.6 million. So uh, that's a lot of money, obviously. But uh, Chiellini's it. been making a lot. He's made a long time playing at the very high levels. Yes. And he's coming here. Well, he did. Uh, I'll, I'll put this out there for you because we'll talk more about Chiellini later, so we won't go too much into him. He, did res he was not a free agent. He had to rescind his contract with Juventus, which was reported as $3 million net, which in Italy would have been about $6 million gross. So the man left money on the table to come to Los Angeles. Yeah, that's the beauty of being affiliated with a club like this. People want to come here. When they say MLS, they're probably thinking about LAFC mm -hmm. and a couple others. I will say this. I knew it was going to be big when it was announced. I wasn't prepared how big it was because I'm going through my social media, and I was watching news in Argentina. News in South Africa, news throughout Europe, outside of Italy, mm -hmm. and this was prominent uh, from writers that I respect and know talking about it uh, through, throughout and many times having that cap tilt, which has become so very LAFC. It's an awesome tradition. I got to do one. I was thrilled. I wish I could do it again. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, but uh, I was, I, it, it, people knew who Chiellini was, but they didn't go, he's signing for this upstart team LAFC they spoke of LAFC like it was an established brand which I had never seen before and I think that coming together excited me I know it was Chiellini but people still mentioned the LAFC hat and by and large people knew what LAFC was they did my timeline was it started out because it as it does starts out in that LAFC circle and so I started to see supporters and it was growing out growing out and then after that it was Top level Italian journalists, top level Argentinian journalists, German, Sky Sports News, England. Every big outlet everybody. had it. And a lot of them saying, joining Los Angeles, 18-month deal. By the way, Los Angeles, top of the league right now. So they were, they were putting it out there. Um, very good of them to actually get it right because sometimes, you know, every once in a while there's the rumors that come up and they go, he's joining at Los Angeles. And they uh, unfortunately use that other team's name, uh, something like that. But this was, they got it spot on. And, yes, it was very interesting to see, like, just the, bre the depth and breadth of, of pundits and journalists that picked up this story. And you know it's big when they're, like, they're not all trying to jump, leapfrog each other. They're just like, I just have to say it because I know it'll get likes because it's Giorgio Chiellini. It's yeah. that big. It's not David Beckham, obviously. But I got to tell, tell you, in this era of social media, it felt like it. Mm -hmm. It felt like it all day, every my refresh timeline. Boom. CBS, Sky Sports. You mentioned it, and they're talking yeah, about Juventus. it. His tweet about it and, and respond to you, LAFC's tweet about it. Uh, Alessandro Piero quoting, he had it on 110 Football. There was, uh, it was pretty cool. And uh, how many, his Twitter handles, like three million followers? On, he's just a beloved person. Uh, and we're, I'm just so excited. We'll talk more about what his role's likely gonna mm -hmm. be or how they see uh, Chiellini here in these 18 months with Will in our next segment. So we, uh, I, I, yeah, if we'll I don't stop, I will keep going. Yeah, we will keep this going. There's a lot of layers on this. Uh, so we'll let's talk about LAFC. We had this break, and that's it. Breaks are complete. We're here in mid-June, 
and it will go till the season is uh, determined in November. Uh, we'll go to playoffs, and we knew this break. We talked to Steve Chirundolo. He was anticipating it. He was eyeing at it, and he wanted to get full value, get the full squeeze to recharge the batteries, as we say in Espanol, cambiar la pila. What is that? Directly transport. Change the batteries. Oh. It was actually a hit song by the Puerto Rican boy band Menudo. Cambiale las pilas. Pull it up on YouTube. It'll get stuck in your head. And uh, you'll end up hearing the entire Menudo songbook, talking, which is not a bad thing. We're talking Ricky Martin still in the band? Ricky or? Martin. We're talking about Fernando. Uh, there's two Rickies in Menudo. You should know that. There's just Ricky Martin. How dare you? I'm not original member. So uh, change the batteries. How much of Menudo's history do you know? I dressed up as Menudo with my friends for Halloween one year. Like last year? Uh, not last year. <laughs> right, 20 years ago. No, last year was Freddie Mercury, right? Was that the Freddie Mercury? It was like 2009. It was pre-COVID. Oh. Oh, right. Didn't really feel like dressing up the last couple of years. Yeah, uh, we, lo we, lost, uh, we lost some Halloweens. Yeah, we lost some Halloweens. So this was a big spot here to get back mm -hmm. on the rails for uh, LAFC. Some guys are on international duty. We have Kellen Acosta, who had a cracking game against Grenada. We'll see. We're taping this Tuesday lunchtime. USA plays El Salvador later tonight. Maybe he features there, but already that's a good, a good run for him. Uh, Daniil Henry and Maxime Crepeau with Canada. Tough uh, game in Honduras. Oof. Well, their Brutal. whole window... Probably shouldn't have been played. They had to. They really only had to play it because they like, need games. I mean, their whole window was just yeah. cut off. And they did a wonderful gesture for the women's team by protesting. And what was an Iran game became a Panama game. And then they, instead of getting two games in that first June pocket, they got none. Mm -hmm. Now they play this game in Honduras. And they played Curacao. So, you know, yeah. didn't get what the USA got, for nope. instance. Nothing to deter Canada, but we want them to stay buoyant because i think they could do well in uh, qatar if they get some games well just look at the look at the playoff uh, on monday australia has a big game ha has to play in to get into the playoff and i know we have a lot of fans lafc fans that are australian fans bam I love you out there in G'day, australia um Top, but, uh, but i think bam can admit this is the least talented australian team in a long time but the fact that they had played games and you have peru coming in with no games, no competitive games. Clear as day. That was the story of that, that game. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you need games. And Canada, everyone's going to have to find a way to be creative because the fresher teams will, uh, the most soccer-ready teams will define themselves in Qatar. Uh, and then the two players in Ecuador, not much more. Chiki. Well, one, only one player in Ecuador now. Now uh, Sifu is back. back. Chiki didn't play in their last game. Uh, on the bench, yeah. Who do they play? Oh, oh, Cape Verde Islands. That guy, is he this a machine? Is, like, what does he do? Every player for Ecuador has come in and out, with the exception of Pervise Stupiñan, and he plays 90 minutes every game. Has not thrown Chiqui a bone. I got heat with Gustavo Alfaro. No, I don't, but I just wanted to say Let's that. Let's get him on the pod. Get him in there. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, everyone's going to be coming back. Obviously, not everyone's going to be uh, on different levels not including the five internationals, but they will trickle in here and they'll get ready for a Seattle game. But this was important for the club to find that spot to refresh their ideas mm -hmm. and say, all right, now we have a very big second half of the season. How do we approach it? Yeah, weird to say that it's a reset because they're top of the table, um, but it did feel like a reset. And it, it's interesting. Steve's been very open about it. Not, not like the specifics, but he was saying there's some more tactical ideas that we want to bring in. And he's very pragmatic about the way he brings – he doesn't want to overload the guys. I, I think that's what people forget. When these guys uh, are working on something, it's not like Steve shows up and goes, guys, we're going to play a low block. Let's just go out there and, and practice a low block. They have to kind of bleed it in, you know, subtly. They don't, they don't give them everything all at once. So that's why he's taking this moment to say, okay, now I have another tactical wrinkle to my game plan. And it's, I'm actually reading that. Have you read the, the Pep Confidential book about Should Pep's I? time? And, and well, fire? as you know, I have my European trip – Oh. Coming up, so I need some reading materials because we'll be on a plane. Well, for a I'm still reading it, so I can't loan loan it to you. Like I, I finished did, uh, uh, Meet Me in the Bathroom. Finished that book, Excellent. yeah, which is great. But uh, the Pep Confidential is about his his time at Bayern, and Pep talks about this. He says, that, you know, there's some things that I hold off in training them with because the season is so long and there's so many games. You can't train every week. Sometimes, like they just had in this past month, where it was literally like recovery, then game, recovery, then game. So he pulls some stuff back, and he just kind of builds them so that at the end of the season, they're at their best. And tactically, they finally have all his ideas. So he doesn't even take all of his ideas and put it out all at once. Just give me that book. Hand it over. Sounds good. It's a pearls before swine. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great line. Good one. So uh, I might be looking at I've been watching the uh, 
the offer on Paramount about how The Godfather was made. So I might be looking for The Kid Stays in the Picture by Robert Evans as a read. Ooh. Because I've been getting Because the guy who plays Robert Evans, if you haven't seen it, it's, an, it's a good show. Maybe you should but get The But the actor who plays Robert Evans is incredible. Should get an Emmy. Give him the Emmy. It's, he's Robert Evans. Matthew Good. Matthew Good. And I, I didn't rate Matthew Good before. I didn't have enough body of work to see it. But his Robert Evans, every time he gets on the screen, you get excited. You're like, oh, it's Robert Evans. You get excited. I get, no, everyone does. No, it's good. It's good. I've been watching it, too. Maybe you should get The Godfather, the original. Oh, yeah. That's not a bad shout. We are right. way off the rails. All right. Let's get back to LAFC. So LAFC now has a, now they get LA, uh, a trip to Seattle. Which is big. Seattle buried in the standings because of CONCACAF Champions League. But they're healthy coming up. They have a lot of guys on international duty as well. Then they get the Red Bulls at home. And then they're off and running. And the trick is use this, this gap to get yourself ready. Get yourself focused. Get refreshed. But pick up on the ideas that you left on that first half of the season. Which saw you finish with the best record in MLS. Well, I, th- I do think it's interesting that there's some new tactical wrinkles coming in. Because could you have... Swerved from one side to the other more quickly between those two teams. Like you're gonna play Seattle and then you're gonna play Red Bulls. Like those are two very diametrically opposed teams in philosophy. So I'm wondering how, how these these tactical ideas. And I'm sure they're not just specifically for the two teams coming up. But I'm just curious how they'll they'll employ them against two very very different teams. Where you play Seattle and they're a team that's pragmatic. You're gonna know that you're gonna need to break them down. You don't want to lose balls in, in dangerous areas because in transition, they'll kill you. They'll just get out and fly. Rui Diaz will find, find a way to just... He was not called up for Peru, so he'll be kind of neat. eager. Yeah, kind of he didn't. Uh, but he'll find a way. He, he always finds a way to disappear and just show up in the most dangerous area of the field and finish. Great one-touch finisher. Great poacher in the box. So you're going to have to de- deal with that where you're thinking you're probably going to break them down even though you're going to their home. And then you play a Red Bulls team that's just high octane, second balls, Hey, we'll, we're going to kick the ball basically up in the air and just surround you with a bunch of guys to see if you'll turn it over. It's it's going to be interesting the way that they manage these two these next two games because it's it's a weird one. And then Wednesday the games shoot. after that, busy July will really test this team. We'll test five most games of these in MLS July teams. and then seven games in August. That's I think this is where LAFC can if they're healthy and you know they got unhealthy uh, for a variety of reasons, but by and large they'll be ready almost to a man. Not quite there yet, but that should benefit them because they are deeper and more experienced in a lot of these positions. And look, Giorgio Chiellini's coming. He'll be available mm-hmm. for that July, July 8th, 8th against, against the Galaxy, Galaxy first game. And then if there's – LFC's going to be active in this market. It's LAFC. Mm-hmm. I just think it's time to, to get some you – know, we were talking to Jordan Harvey about it earlier in the season. He was like, does, does the midfield feel a little like there's a problem there for you? He goes, they just need time. Well, guess what? They haven't gotten to have any time because you've got Kellen Acosta having to move to right back at times. You've got – you know, Sifu moving around. You've got Latif coming in and out with injury. So I, I just, I know that Steve probably has an idea what his best 11 is, but he hasn't had a chance to keep them on the field for consecutive games. It would be interesting to go through what we would like to Seattle if everyone's healthy. You know, you have Crepeau. Uh, it'd be Hollingshead, Escobar. Yep. Uh, Hollingshead with the goals, I think it's the guy for Hollingshead's me. great. Escobar, in a, in a weird way, is the is. Is almost the guy for me just because if he's healthy, what an you're able to do so much, and then you have that depth again where yeah. you can play your, your preferred. And Hollingshead field. can cover. And Hollingshead he's not going to be, I mean, it's not what he would he'll start signed up games. for, but he'll do it. No, well, he'll start in some games. He's obvious, and then obviously late in games, the ability to bring Ryan Hollingshead off the bench, not just for what he can do getting up and down the pitch, but set pieces. If you need a goal late in the game and you can, you can put Hollingshead in with the rest of those bigs in there. Yeah. Fall Murillo, Cheeky, Killini, I, I can't imagine. I, I, we'll talk to. Uh, Will about it, but he's not going to be, hey, we're putting him in, at the, uh, in, nor does he want to be an everyday player. I don't think so. He wants to be effective. They've said it. So front. Murillo and Fall good. will be there. Chiellini's just going to get in there as well. With Eddie some Segura's been out ready. here. Eddie Segura might be ready here soon. Uh, remember, he was on the bench in that last game, didn't play, so maybe he'll get some minutes. This is fantastic. Look at this. Look at, maybe it's more exciting to talk about who's coming off the bench than the starting 11. Yep. Uh, but the trio in the midfield with uh, Sifu, Acosta, and Ilie. And then Chicho Vela, Brian? Yeah, and I, I think... That sounds good. I know. Well, when have we been able to say that? Brian's been a whole different player since he's come back. And uh, honestly, you and I have gotten to see him not just on the field, but off the field. Uh, we can share this with you guys. Just here personally. Uh, he's, look, he's always been a, a warm guy, friendly guy, smile, would say hi to us. But he's now he's, like, coming in embracing. Like, yeah. comes and gives Max a hug. Came, like, came and gave me a hug the other day. Like, it's, I think he hugs you because he, he wants to get on this show. You think so? That's the way to him to get on the show. He wants to be on this podcast so bad that he would hug Vince. 
Just kidding. No, he's a delightful <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's delightful. We, I, I love being here. He uh, seems he just see, there's something clicked, and, and we kind of said this earlier in the season. But then he got injured again, and he just came back with kind of like a just a fury, just a, a, an intenseness to him, but also this kind of an idea of like, man, I'm here. I'm here for the long haul. Like, yeah. let's win trophies. People love Vince here. I mean, he's earned that. He's spent so much time he's here. Spent a lot of time. I dap up a lot of guys. He does. He does. Kiss a get... lot of ass. <laughs> Highly, highly recommend that, kids, if you want to get places. Tell you what, I came here in a Juventus jersey because, as, as I've said, I am a Juventus fan. Not a good idea. Oof. Got, a, got, a lot of, got a lot of flack from people. Oh, did you Why just buy you that on that? Amazon? Oh, you just become a fan? No, no friend. No friend. I've been an, I've been an Amazon supporter. I've been a Juventus supporter for a long time. But just go, just go full circle with the Apple thing. That's why you want people around that makes the players – uh, come out, makes the coaches come out, have those relationships, because you can bring that into the content plays, whatever they are. And I hope you feel that when we do this. But uh, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, that's it. We just got to get ready for this. this I'm excited. We've missed the games. Yes. We'll get a home game in a couple weeks. Uh, but we'll start here with Seattle, which obviously doesn't really need that much buildup. You got the CONCACAF Champions League winners, really the best team in the West uh, who have made many MLS Cups just well, the last five, six years. Well, let's talk just a hot second about that Seattle game. What will we take away from it? I mean, no, it's a premature because we're obviously not. But, like, Seattle is a obviously a rival, probably a very close second to the Galaxy, um, a team that a lot of our supporters really want to beat and dislike because of the way they've been able to dump us out in important moments. Uh, you and I have both said this, that they are head and shoulders above. They are the, the greatest expansion team in MLS at this moment. LAFC could be. But at this moment, with the trophies that they've won and obviously now winning Conquer Camp Champions League, they, they have to be. I called the game. They won the Open Cup their first year of existence in MLS. Mm -hmm. So, But you come out of this, and, and it's still really far from the playoffs. So it's not, yeah. not to say that this is like a, a matchup that we might see in the playoffs, but you come out of a two-week break. What, what would you like to see? I mean, obviously, you want to see three points. But if they don't get three points, is that going to worry you? Is that, is that no. going to alarm bells for you? No, it's a... Uh... Playing up there, obviously, where LFC um, had success in their first ever game. Mm -hmm. uh, hasn't been that case in the last couple of years, a couple interrupted years. Certainly last year, we were at that Seattle game, and yeah. they got away from them. Uh, yeah, they came on that first half, just lights out, pressing. I think it's bigger for Seattle because they have some work to do. Games and in hand are only good if you win them. Yeah, and they're going to build up to that, and they know this will get them back on the, on the right path. Uh, so LAFC should go there maybe thinking like, all right, let's 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 spoil a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get back in our rhythms and whatever I'm that just, looks like. I'm just very interested. If they get a win, yeah. oof. I'm just very interested to see how Steve deploys them because we, we knew in previous years exactly how they were going to go to Seattle. And I'm not so sure now. And Seattle might not know. Seattle might be like, well, we'll sit back. We know they're going to press us and we'll look for our moments. Well, what if Steve puts them out there in that low block like he did against the crew? Then what does Seattle do? Mm. So I think that, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. In fact, I know you guys are all excited to see LAFC back in action, but just to see how they look after this break, it's been really good here, and you could see uh, the decompression on a lot of players. They need it, but how do they click back in? It's an experienced team, which is going to benefit them. So there you have it. So a lot to get into, but we want to save the best for our guests. Will Kuntz coming up next, uh, assistant general the, manager. He might be the guest that's been on this podcast the most. Don't tell him this, but his... His podcast with us get good numbers. Yeah. Really good numbers. Yeah. So we know you love him, but we can't tell him that. Oh, but what we do tell him, we, we try to pit him against Thorrington, and we'll say, you know, yeah, hey, maybe we can... hey, John, uh, Will's episode's doing really good. And then John's like, well, how, when was the last time I was on? So that's what we try to do. Try to, there you go. Try to get that going. But you, it's, it's all about one or Giorgio, not Maroder, Giorgio Chiellini. <laughs> Where did how'd you go there? Because I was thinking of the song by Daft Punk. Okay. Where they had Giorgio Moroder. He goes, my name is Giorgio. You remember that? Mm -hmm. It's not Moroder. It's Chiellini. We'll be joined by Will Kuntz. We got ice here in our ice bucket. It's a great day here at the Performance Center in Alhambra. Will Kuntz, Assistant General Manager, joins us next. Inside LAFC MVP pod. We are back here on Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. As promised, the man who runs the boat here, runs the show. Senior VP of Soccer Ops and Assistant General Manager Will Coons, who's making your third appearance on the pod? No, it's only been three. I think it's only been three. I think it's three. The first one was so good, it felt like two. Mm -mm. Has to be more than three because I think we've had two transfer ones. Um, we spoke with you uh, after 
it's wrong. In, you're in, in, a, in a bad moment for in the 20, world. In 2020, yeah. We yeah. spoke with you after the after yeah, George Zoom. Floyd uh, and, and yeah. what was going on. Oh, that's right. That was really there, good. Which was, which was a great podcast to have you on. And Let's call it four. Yeah, at least four. Well, the good news, there's no way you could ever check. So, uh, Well, I just bring it up because you're number one on the appearance list. You are the most capped player in Inside LAFC that, that can't possibly be podcast true. history. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. It has to be. I think... Well, look, we, we said this before you came on. We're just pitting you and John against each other because whenever John hears that you've been on more times, then he'll come on. It's our way to get you guys to like, be on the show. Well, he doesn't sense. care less, does he? If you told him, hey, I've been on there one more time. <laughs> I, th I think right. we add up all the media appearances. You know, like I've got you guys in the factor in ESPN, Fox, uh, the rest of it. I'm probably trailing by a healthy margin. A it's okay, though. Uh, many of you may have read uh, the article by Josh Gross of the Daily News about the pursuit of Giorgio Chiellini, which sounds like a really good docudrama that may be... Apple TV could pursue the pursuit of Giorgio Chiellini. Will's along a ride, along for the ride with that. Will's that sounds driving, like an no, he's driving it, bro. <laughs> you were there. I was. So how I was, was that? There. You went off. So it it all started back in uh, 2017. Uh, there was a Y Scout is a video company that does. Uh, they have a platform to watch football games from all over the world, and they have a forum where they bring different decision makers from clubs from all over the world. And so in 2017. You know, it's the year before we start. We're looking to build a new club, uh, and I'm there looking to meet a whole bunch of different people. And there uh, comes a guy walking up who looks just like uh, Giorgio. It's his twin brother, Claudio Chiellini. And uh, at the time, you know, I'm like, oh, my goodness, you know, I love watching your brother play. He's like, yes, uh, my brother, though, is at Juventus, so he's not going to be coming to LAFC. Oh. Wow, he He's really yeah, shot yeah, you down, yeah, huh? Yeah, but, uh, Great you know, to meet you. He's I, not coming. I, I, I was actually it. about <laughs> to ask you that because in Josh's story, he's like, oh, you know, just kind of planted the seed. I'm like, yeah, but how do you do that? You just go like, I, I like your brother. Well, yeah, he's well. sort of like, he was like, maybe one day, but certainly right now. No, yeah. no, 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 no. But then he says, you know, I'm, I'm the loan manager for the reserves at uh, Juventus. And so as we think about how to build a roster in MLS, we want to be a club that acquires young, you know, on the rise talent. And I said, oh, man, this is perfect. You know, we'll be able to snatch some of Juve's best and brightest and get him here for 12 to 18 months. And I think for the next six to eight month stretch, I'd hit uh, Claudio pretty regularly. I mean, what about this guy? He'd be like, oh, this guy's fantastic. Like, Can we get him? He'd be like, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, well, how about this guy? Oh, this what guy. What about this Dybala kid? This guy, <laughs> yeah. You know, he's, he's, he might even be better than the other kid. I'm like, well, what happened to him? Like, no, absolutely not. And they're like... Well, what about this guy? Like, ah, he's, you might be able to get this guy. How much does he make? Oh, two million net. And you're like, okay, well, that, that, that puts us out. Um, but he said, like, you know, Willie, you've got. A, he, they call me Willie. Um, he's like, Willie, you've got a, you've got a good eye, and you know, we Calls stayed in Willie. touch. Oh yeah, that's Willie. Ciao, ciao Willie. Willie. Ciao Willie. Ciao Willie. Um, but uh, you know, over the years, we kept in touch. Then he moved to Pisa. Uh, you know, so he was running his own. Uh, it's a leaning tower. That's where they're yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. he's running his own club, and they're in Serie B now. They're they really close to getting promoted this year. Um, but we stayed in touch, and then he reached out in January uh, and said, you know, my, my brother's interested in making a move to MLS, and, you know, he knows your club, and uh, if Italy doesn't make the World Cup, he'd love to come. And so, of course, I say, well, that's, that's great. Uh, I'm sure Italy's going to make the World Cup, <laughs> just in case to tick the box. You jinxed sorry, it. Sorry, <laughs> I just keep taking L's every time just, we talk about it. <laughs> just to tick the box, you know, yeah. I go to Steve and say, hey, man, uh, I don't know how real this is, but, you know, not for nothing, his twin brother says, uh, you know, he'd be interested if, um, you know, Italy doesn't qualify. And Steve kind of says, well, yeah, I mean, that'd be incredible to add a guy like that. But He's like, but also, I know I'm a rookie head coach. Like, yeah. you don't want to punk me like yeah. that. He's like, sure, I'd love uh, Ronaldo, too, right, while we're exactly. at it. So it's all very hypothetical. And, and then... I'm not kidding. The day after Italy gets knocked out, there's a message from Claudio saying, "Hey, you know, Georgia would like to talk about coming." And then, um, you know, then it just becomes quickly a conversation about, um, you know, our club. And I think it's a testament to our setup here and, and how the season has gone, how our our first four and a half seasons have gone. Uh, that Giorgio, you know, and, and he's a, a very sharp guy. He understands designated players and and the different cost structures of uh, MLS player bands but you know he really wanted to come here for the football project and you know, he wanted to come here for the football and he said it's not about the money um you know i want to make sure that uh what you guys pay me doesn't detract from what you're able to do in terms of putting the best field on the team possible and so we thought that was very encouraging uh steve and i had a zoom uh our own zooms with with giorgio john and i had zooms with giorgio our owners uh, larry berg did and across the board i mean everybody comes like you go in thinking he's going to be great and he is within you know 
two minutes, you know, quite evidently. Well, John made. even said, he goes, you knew right away that this guy is different. Immediately. What is some of those things that you notice that he just, he has me under his spell? Um, this guy's amazing. You know, it's, it's humility, right? I mean, you know, he'll come and say, listen, I'm not, I don't want to come to retire, but I'm not coming to take anybody's job. I don't expect to have anything given to me. You know, I want to come and I want to fight for it. Um, you know, I want to have the best football project, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to just come to America for the lifestyle. This is very important to me. Um, I think there's also a little bit of, uh, you know, he's been in one place outside a short loan spell to Fiorentina. He's been in one place his whole career. And so there's a little bit of like the, you know, the excitement of something new and, and a little bit of the, you know, I think maybe a little bit of the, it sounds crazy, but like the so fear cool. of being the new kid at school. That's right? so yeah. awesome. Um, well, he speaks English. He, uh, clearly, it was something, English. and this was well, th he's spoken English. I mean, this is not like he learned the like, past couple yeah. of years. Um, Studying to be a lawyer. I mean, wasn't that, yeah. he's just a remarkable person. Uh, leaving the football out, which is obviously has its uh, its, its own draws. Wait, but, but, if we, but if I hear that right, because one thing that made my ears perk up was like, yeah, you planted the seed, but then... Giorgio was actually following LAFC and was aware of LAFC outside of this kind of seed that was planted. Yeah, I think you know it's it's always something that um, you know, he's thought of as you know, how do I how do I finish my career right and how do I make sure that I'm challenging myself and then you know we obviously weren't even in the league we weren't in existence when that started but as time goes by uh, and I think we show the world what we're about um, you know it becomes more and more attractive and I think you know talking to uh, his friend Alessandro Del Piero who lives in LA and has a you know, restaurant here, uh, I think really helped. Uh, I like how he explained it like it was like well, Joe Schmo off the street. Know, just, like, or, this is Alessandro Del yeah, Piero. Uh, some soccer <laughs> fishing I was there, less than the football. Uh, I'm not sure everybody feels included. Um, but, uh, you know, he was aware of us. And I think, you know, he's also a very meticulous, methodical guy. So he started watching us playing, right? So I don't think it's the type of thing where he says, oh, LAFC would be great. Let me find, you know, let me go there. I think he's like, all right, this is a a club that's out there that might be of interest. Let me watch how they play. And and it got to the point when when I went to um, you know, to London for the finalissima uh, between Italy and Argentina, uh, which is where I was going to meet Georgia, and we concluded the negotiations the next day. Um, you know, he knows he knew our schedule better than you know almost as well as I did. And we we kept on getting into arguments because he'd be like, "Oh, the game against the Galaxy is on the ninth and I'd be like. No, it's on the eighth, and everybody, you know, his family's there. Oh, because there. the time changes. His family's yeah. there. You know, the Juventus technical staff is yeah. there, and they're looking at this. This guy doesn't even know his own team schedule, and I'm like, what? And but I look and Google. I'm like, oh yeah, no, nine on the ninth in Italy, but the eighth here, right? So yeah. everything's you know nine hours ahead. So, but it was. You know, He's going through the schedule. Hey, we got Nashville like, here on the 16th. But he, but he <laughs> knew like, everything to the day, and I was just like, how am I getting this this wrong? Or how does yeah. this guy know everything? But it's just that level of. Um, I think being intentional and deliberate and methodical with everything he does, um, and he doesn't do anything halfway. Like when mm -hmm. he when he decides he's going to do it, he's all about it. Well, you've been doing this for a while without outing anyone. How many players have you ran into that are like, yeah, I'm watching the game, and I can actually share you some finer points, and I know the schedule. Oh, I mean, how often does that actually happen? Really, just putting me in the uh, no, no. You don't have to tell me the players, right but here. tell me how often does that happen? What I would say is, um, it it. It can happen, and then what is also sometimes surprising is it's never necessarily who you'd expect. Mm. So some of the guys you think might be totally checked out, um, you know, are watching a lot. Some of the guys you think are locked in are not. And then, you know, Ilya is just obviously, like, he's he's watching all the time because yeah. he's, he's one of those types of guys. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're out there. We saw Ilya sitting there watching Chiringuito. Chiringuito. <laughs> so happy. He's doing his calisthenics and watching Chiringuito on his phone. It's, it's a nice moment. Incredible. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things with uh, Giorgio Kinelli. Giorgio Chiellini, including the playing of, the, of what he's going to do. And I'd like to get into that. But you mentioned, he said, it's not about the money. But from a certain perspective, this is a, a big investment for LAFC. And I immediately think of young defenders, Mamadou Fall, Eddie Segura, Chiki Palacios, who we, we don't know how it's going to look like on the field for Chiellini. But I think it goes without saying that you know he is going to rub off against the players here, players that are an investment to LAFC. Um, how do you see that playing out as Chiellini – more than a player and what he can possibly do to uh, to help the stock of some of these guys? No, it's a great question. And this is going to sound a little absurd, I think. But, you know, what I said to John and, and our owners is that I, I honestly think that if Giorgio doesn't play a minute on the field for us, it will be worth it. I think it will make the whole club better because of his approach, um, you know, what we know about him as a pro and the way he goes about training, the way he thinks about the game, the type of teammate he is. Um, you know, and I've, I've spoken to... Uh, other players who have played with him, um, you know, even for small periods of time in their career, and they will say that, you know, they all have very strong, fond memories of playing alongside Giorgio. Um, but, you know, just what you, you know, what you laid out, right? You've got 
uh, Cheeky Palacios as a left back. You've got uh, Fall as a young um, center back. Uh, you know, Eddie Segura returning. I mean, it is, and this isn't a knock on, um, you know, Sebastian Abiaga or his career. They, they will benefit. Yeah, too. I mean, they're, they're, they're veterans. They've been around. But, I mean, this level of experience, right, playing in the biggest games, you know, w- winning a Euros, um, going to Champions League final, you know, uh, Copa Italia after Copa Italia, you know, um, competing at the highest level in Serie A. This is just a, a different level of experience. And, you know, a left-footed guy who plays in the back line will just, I think, in all ways sort of help make things easier for guys. It'll make things easier for the midfielders. If it's Ilya or Kellen checking back to get a ball, it'll make things easier on Max, right, when you're trying to figure out how you want to build out. Um, you know, easier for Eddie, Fall, Murray, Seb, who's next to him on the right, Cheeky on the left, or Ryan if he's playing on the left, mm-hmm. I think. Um, yeah, there's probably not a position I haven't named, but uh, I think he's that type of guy who's that type of impact. Uh, and I think that happens in training and not just on the field in mm-hmm. games. That's something that I've clued in on because I got to sit in when you guys were, were talking about him before the announcement. And one thing you guys kept bringing up was the passing and building out the back. And look, I'm a Juventus fan, so I, I like Giorgio Keenly. I've watched him a lot. People will ask me because a, a lot of people have preconceived notions of how Giorgio plays because Giorgio is tall. Uh, he is a bit awkward at times when he runs. There's nothing wrong with being tall and awkward. No, there is know, nothing. <laughs> I'm speaking with you. <laughs> but I had to go back there and think. I go, you know, in my mind, because Juventus plays a certain style and they're always on the front foot, um, I didn't think too much about Giorgio playing the ball. And then I looked at his numbers and the progressive passes. Uh, the fact that he's in, like, the 90th percentile of def- center backs shot-creating actions. Like, that's something that I didn't even think about. But I'm going to guess you as an analytics person like tell me a little bit about the player <laughs> like, profile and the and the things that you saw and what people are maybe missing when they just think big strong Italian defender yeah I mean I think if you're if what you're saying when Chiellini comes to mind is big strong Italian defender I, you, I think you're probably you haven't watched him play very much um you know I mean obviously he defends like a a banshee um you know, he's everywhere he is hard knows the number of I mean, you guys have seen it online, just like the different pictures of him with his head taped, you know, and, and blood pouring from kind of every available mm-hmm. spot in his head. Um, you know, he is that type of warrior. But, you know, again, you can't play 17 years at Juve uh, competing in the types of games that he has without having uh, to be really good on the ball, right? And uh, his ability on the ball is a huge piece of, of what we see as additive when we bring him in. And it goes back to what I was saying before. It helps Cheeky. It helps Kellen and Ilya and Latif and Sifu in the midfield. It helps Max. Uh, it allows us to do a lot of different things uh, in how we want to build out, maybe even some formational flexibility as we think about, um, you know, this next, the final stretch of the season. It's going to be hot. The games come quick. The games get um, sort of ratcheted up in terms of importance the closer we get to the playoffs. And then once you're in the playoffs, it's the next, next level. So um, I think he has a lot of solutions tactically with his feet and technically to help us get out of uh, – problems and, and help us you know stop from getting into problem spots in the first place about the the usage of the player and i know a lot of people would know but how would you foresee uh, a successful run because when they first mentioned Giorgio Chiellini, you would hear oh mls travel uh, mls turf or mls very hot very cold at certain times of the month well, we had gavin last week yeah. and we were just talking about how you know if you're you play for liverpool or manchester city from february to may you know you're playing every week three games a week and we asked him, we're like, could you even do that in the United States? He goes, well, maybe. <laughs> I mean, and you guys talked to Gavin after maybe the roughest month possible. Yeah, right. well, well, that, that, that was a good right. time to get him. We, 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 him we scheduled this pod <laughs> very specifically. But to uh, Max's point, there's unique externalities in MLS that do not exist around Yeah, the world. no, I mean, I was, you know. How do you think he's going to handle it? I mean, it's a. Uh, yeah, I think, listen, I, and again, he's, he knows himself well, uh, I think. He's very aware of the league. Now, he may not quite understand how intense the travel is. You know, I go back to uh, that game we played against uh, Miami this year. And, and when you do that thing where you overlay the MLS travel map over Europe, and if L.A. is Barcelona, Miami is, like, northwestern Iraq. You know, so, like, <laughs> I haven't little, seen that map, but a I got a little bit further than going from, you know, maybe, like, Torino to Milan. Uh, so you're saying this isn't, like, Northwestern the, uh, Iraq. Yeah. The classic is the, oh, you got to go to Donetsk to play Shakhtar. Right. This is, this is yeah, this two is times exactly, farther, pretty much. Exactly. Um, so I think, you know, it's something that is going to be new for him, but he's aware of it. And, and he would also say, like, you know, he knows that physically he can't maybe do everything uh, he could before. And so it's going to be incumbent on on all of us right so as you know particularly gavin and the performance staff and steve and the coaches to make sure that we manage him um 
because he also might be the type of guy that you have to chop his leg off to keep him from playing. And, and you'd always rather have a guy that you need to, to back down rather than, mm -hmm. than get going. But I think, um, you know, understanding sort of where he's at physically, which is going to come from just our staff working with him, uh, communicating with him about the travel. And then, you know, there's always an adjustment period, um, no matter where you're coming from when it comes to this league. Uh, but, you know, thankfully, the, the heavy East Coast trips are all in the rearview mirror now. So, which, of course, Giorgio also, he knew. He's like, oh, well, we don't go to the East Coast anymore. He knew that. Oh, I'm well, telling you. He, he had an idea you were already into everything. the regional schedule yeah, part of it and was, everything. You know, wow. He was asking when we traveled two days before and the whole thing. And Does he have restaurants picked out for when he goes to some of these cities? And he's, you know, he, he, he it's might. a good question because it's probably going to be, if, if you can get in on that, you know, on that uh, outing, it's, it's probably a higher caliber of uh, meal good. than uh, what you get in the hotel. Obviously, we asked, we asked about Giorgio and his, his knowledge of MLS. What were some other conversations you had with people out there? Were you running into, you said you were, you're obviously dealing with Giorgio's agent. You're dealing with uh, people out there for Finalissimo. You're running into people. What were their kind of thoughts that you're, it's been probably been a while since you've had, got a chance to really mingle with all those people and, and talk about that kind of stuff? You know, COVID, I think uh, that one of the greatest parts of, of the job is getting to go to you know, events like that or, or being out at, at big international games. Marco Garces, our director of football now, is in Madrid for, uh, a transfer room summit. So I said, hey, you know, I, I kind of set the bar. The gauntlet's been laid down, so you got to you bring something back. back right, we'll give you five years, but you better have somebody. Wow, uh, that's great. That's like funny. This. Uh, Gavi's coming. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> but the uh, you know the really cool thing about being uh, there in London, and it, you know, it's um, it was first of all, it's like an honor. You know, talk about like a bucket list of being invited by you know Giorgio to be there for his last game with the Azzurri. Um, you know, I went with his uh, agent, and his agent is the son of Marcello Lippi, who was a legendary Italian manager and, and you know, football god. Um, you know, so you walk in with Davide Lippi, um, you know, and we have very good seats at Wembley. On the other side of the aisle to our right is the entire Italian federation, right? So everybody comes over to say hi, um, you know, to Davide. You know, people have some awareness of me, so people say hi to me. When Giorgio's mom walks in, I mean, you know, she's the real agent. I mean, when she walks in, everybody stops and says hi. But, um, you know, we're sitting there in, in the first few rows, uh, surrounded by, you know, Giorgio's family, his agents, um, you know, his, some of his friends from Livorno. And it's just a really emotional moment, right? And you kind of get a sense of, uh, you know, of, of what it means to everybody. And, and to the point where I sort of feel kind of guilty as an outsider, like, I, you know, you got to I see it. I don't, yeah, I got to, I, I'm Experience so it. grateful to be here, but it doesn't feel like I belong here. But, right. um, you know, that was really cool when you got to see sort of how much Giorgio means to different people and how excited people are for him and what comes next, right? And uh, I think it's, um, you know, to our credit that nobody's really looking at this as a retirement move because they know Giorgio, right? So I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of excitement about who we are because it's, you know, we're the club that he's picking and that he's coming to. Well, real quick, I said this before you came on. Giorgio had a contract. Giorgio was not a free agent. Giorgio was going to play for Juventus. Giorgio had to mutually rescind his contract. That, that is correct. Correct, yeah. Okay. And, the, and that's not totally uncommon. You know, no, of course uh, not. But at, I'm at just saying he was, not, he was not like, oh, yeah, I've there's find options. Yeah, there's yeah, options. No, absolutely. Right? If, he wanted, listen, if he wanted to make more money, he could have stayed there and made more money. And if he wanted to make more money somewhere else, he probably could have gone somewhere else to make more money. But I think he, you know, um, like I said earlier, he was very intentional about what he wanted to do. Um, and why he wanted to do it. And so, uh, again, that just speaks to the type of guy he is. Uh, but, yeah, and, and it, it speaks to the relationship that he has and the respect that he's earned with Juventus, right, that he can come after 17 years and say, listen, guys, I, you know, I'd like to have this opportunity to do something different, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they didn't say, hey, man, you've got a contract. You know, we're going to stick it to you. They said, no, we are very supportive of you doing, uh, you know, what's next in your career. I know, and I, I Vince would agree, and we saw the rollout for Giorgio Chiellini, and we saw that cap tilt everywhere. You, you were involved with that. Uh, he was well, an EP were, on the cap tilt. You were, the EP. Well, yeah, I, you I was, were in the room when that I happened? Was, yeah, I mean, I, uh, it was the morning. So the game was on uh, Wednesday night, uh, and then we had dinner afterwards, and so you know, Giorgio came and uh, met us a little bit later. So we were at the restaurant for until about 2.30, which is late. And then uh, the entire staff. Like red wine or white wine? Uh, red, red. Okay. Red. Um, <laughs> yeah, a very nice, uh, yeah, a very nice uh, Montepulciano. <laughs> but uh, Barolo, well, great Italian wines. Um, you know, you know, and when you leave at two thirty, the restaurant's been sort of closed for a while. We have a little private room, and you kind of walk out into the main area, and the entire staff is there. It's Italian restaurant, and the entire staff is there waiting for Giorgio. And Giorgio takes pictures and signs with everybody. Wow. Right. Um, 
you, know, you walk outside. By the time you actually get outside the restaurant, it's you know, 3 o'clock in the morning. And, and I'm on L.A. time, so I'm doing okay. Uh, and I decide to walk back to my hotel. It's about a mile walk, so I walk back to my hotel. And then I have to you know, get on the horn with Seth Burton and try and arrange how we're going to capture the videographer. Are we going to get the documents from MLS tomorrow? What's going on? And so you kind of do all this. And then, uh, yeah, the next morning um, as we're going through this meeting, you know, you've got the... There's like, hey, there's a video crew. And I hadn't heard back, but it's like, there's just a video crew in the lobby. Um, and I assumed it was for the Italian national team. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Giorgio's crew assumed it was for somebody else. And so, uh, yeah, it would, you know, happened to be there, and we got, we got it done. Uh, I, just, to follow up on that, because I saw that cap tilt everywhere, and I saw people all over the world. Everyone knows who Giorgio Chiellini is, but at the same time, they by and large knew what LAFC was with that hat. Yeah. They put it together. And... As I spoke, as, as I said before, with Vince and I, the excitement of having somebody that we're going to see on the field, but that is going to draw some eyeballs. Uh, how do you see him there as a, as an asset uh, for content for these kind of things that are so important for this league? Yeah, I think I think it's it's Thanks great well. to get new eyes um, and attention from a different part of the world. I I will say that, and this has been consistent, you know, five years ago to now, it's changing slightly, but there is still, I think, a, a view of MLS as not at the level of quality that it actually course, is. Yeah. Um, and it's hard if you're not living it. And you hear this a lot now from players who come from other places. They get here and they're like, wow, this league's a lot a lot better, a lot faster, a lot tougher than I thought it would be. Um, and I think uh, as an ambassador and as somebody who you know wants to continue in the game and still has strong connections, I think this can be very impactful in helping kind of overturn that perception. Um, and I'm maybe not... Uh, so grandiose as to think it'll be for the entire league, but I think for our club, it can have a very, very positive impact uh, in changing people's perceptions. And it's gonna make people watch us play, right? I think if you watch us play, you can, you can kind of see the quality um, pretty evidently, but that's a, that initial bar is tough to clear for a lot of people, and hopefully this will change that. Yeah, just getting the eyeballs. Uh, I think we will get plenty of chances to talk much more, Giorgio, and it's, we're, it's, we're looking. We are looking forward to it's it. A very compelling conversation. Sure some, I'm sure at some point he'll be sitting in that chair, and we'll be talking with him. But I want to. Uh, so, obviously, Giorgio is a huge signing. You guys still have an open DP slot, but let me start here. The roster's uh, pretty big. Yeah. Pretty big now. So, I mean, it, it, is there a lot still going on? A lot. Of the, are we looking at comings and goings? I mean, what's what's the window starting to look like? So I, I, you know. In, in MLS, we, we think of DPs as kind of like three magic bullets, right? And um, you don't necessarily have to fire them, but if you shoot them, you got to make sure that they hit their target, right? I, I'm not sure if that analogy works. That's great. Probably not topical. I should fix no, that is, it's not topical, uh, but it, it's effective. I think it's magic arrows. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, um, and, and we're, you know, again, we're fortunate. We're top of the table right now. I think we have a very strong, deep squad, so we don't feel uh, that we have to make a move, but I do think that. You know, we are always, as we always look to improve, if we can make ourselves a little bit better, um, you know, we need to explore that. And so it's a strange time in the international market at the moment. You know, typically this would be when the World Cup is happening. Mm -hmm. But with a winter World Cup, um, you know, sometimes the, the flywheel starts after the World Cup and, and guys who have big performances start to move. It's a little bit different. You have, you have a few more people who are saying, hey, maybe this next six-month stretch is a good chance for me to, to kind of reach peak fitness, um, to get prepare myself for the World Cup, some people are thinking, hey, this next six months is going to be really big for, for my chances of making the final World Cup squad. So you have some guys available um, that maybe traditionally wouldn't be or, or some contract opportunities that you normally wouldn't have. Um, but, you know, just like with any summer window, um, you know, I think we're, we're going to listen and we're going to do some looking. I think if we can add a piece that we feel makes us better, uh, we will do that. But again, I think we're fortunate in that we don't feel compelled to do something because we have a really good roster uh, and that's before we you know we, we talk about Giorgio coming a lot I think of Eddie Segura as another transfer that we're gonna mm -hmm. sort of get right Eddie coming off the disabled list and joining our team um, is gonna be a huge lift also so uh, we've got a couple really good horses coming who are gonna help us out and uh, yeah we're still doing some some homework and seeing what's out there have you started to narrow the net then a little bit because in January we talked with John and it was like we're Yes, we're definitely, we are not adverse to filling that third DP slot. We want to do it. It's probably going to be an attacking type player. That's how we do it. And then, like you said, you guys had a good start. Uh, you really put some points in the bank that put you in a position. And John was honest, as he normally is, and he says, now we've got some more data points. And now, I, now I'm looking at my team more. So are you the player profile? Are, have you guys starting to narrow in? Or what are, where are you at in that kind of? 
I think the type of player we've been looking at is the same type of player we've been looking at this whole time. Um, you know, it's scouting and, and football is, is sort of like standing on quicksand, you know, where day to day everything is moving a little bit, right? Be it uh, maybe a guy's acquisition price because of uh, interest that he's got from other clubs. Maybe, you know, he scores a goal in, in the Nations League game and all of a sudden, you know, his price has gone up by whatever. Um, you know, like I said before, some other moves take place in the marketplace and maybe now he's surplus to his team's plans. And so a guy who was, you know, a million dollars last week might be $3 million today. A guy who was no chance in hell two weeks ago is now available on a TAM deal. So, um, you know, we have to keep our options open always and, and never sort of shut up shop, but I think we have refined our list down. Um, and so we have some names that we feel really good about if the deal structure uh, you know, works for us. It could happen, but no no rush. It's got to be the right. Did I hedge well enough? Money's right. Yeah. Everything's, yeah, that is great. Well, but that's why we love having both you and John here. Because like I said, John is honest at least to a point that he can be. Right. And yeah. you are as well. You did a little good tap dance there. I would it say makes you, sense. You don't want to shoehorn anything here. You want to talk well about references gone. that he probably can't use anymore. Dude, quicksand's not real, bro. Like, we were told that. We were kids. It's not a thing. And don't forget your magic arrows. Your magic arrows this, make the hit the target. True. Is quicksand not a thing? Yeah, it's not a thing. It's not real. Oh, man. Um, hey, it's if, like a, you Will, know. I, I, I'm finding this out for the first it. time, too. We're going to take a five, I <laughs> <laughs> Come back. On Come back and get on our computers. Um, okay. Well, I'll think of my uh, I really, analogy. Of yeah. all the things that you thought you were going to get on this podcast, me saying quicksand's not real is what has really With stopped you in your tracks. What was going to derail tracks. me would not have picked that yeah. up, but yeah. Uh, we're going to clip that off, and that's what we're going to share with the audience that's, that's here how we're to draw get them in. in. Oh, God. I mean, geez, I mean those, <laughs> all those, those Disney afternoons, just a lot. I know. We were lied how to. Many, how many Tailspin episodes revolve around? That's what now, I'm now, saying. Sorry, now we're going far. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Dated reference. I'm so washed. I was watching a movie Crawl. They have a very good quicksand scene in there, too. And uh, once you're in, uh, you need like 10 people to pull you out. Did I I'm sure there's a there's a bog of quicksand somewhere on this planet. Yeah, bogs are real. <laughs> yeah, bogs are real. <laughs> they don't like pull you down into this like hole that's 100 feet deep that just it's not it's not real. Yeah. I'm telling you. Well, it's, it's like Blazing Saddles lied to us. Scouting is like uh, many ways standing in a bog. There you go. <laughs> but are you a hey, notwithstanding a trip to London to get the signature of Giorgio Chiellini? Are you refreshed for this now extended second half of the season? We're talking about everyone else's. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's um. I'm really excited. You know, it's uh, it, it's been a few, couple years since we won the Supporter Shield, um, but we've got a really good group. You know, we had uh, a casino night. We had a preseason trip to Palm Springs uh, in the preseason, and we had a casino night at sort of the capstone of that trip. Um, and it was really clear, you know, and at that night that we have a really special group here. You know, guys who really like each other. We've got a good mix. I think we've rebalanced the mix of veterans and younger players, and so. Um, you know, we've got a diverse squad in terms of experience, age, where they come from, how they play, personalities. I think we have the chance to do something really special with this group. And so, um, you know, adding Giorgio is only going to be a massive lift. We get Eddie back. We'll have some more guys returning to health. You know, as, uh, Brian's getting back to fitness. Uh, Izzy to Jury Shroudy has been down for a little bit. Um, so it's, I'm really excited. You know, and, and, and listen, everybody's going to be coming and gunning for us because uh, we're at the top of the table now. Other teams are getting a lot better. You know, there will be other players coming in in the window. So uh, it's exciting. It's going to be hard, and it's going to keep on getting harder the closer we get. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Good. Will Coons on his uh, unofficially third-and-a-half appearance on uh, We'll check, the, we'll check the math on check, that. Check Max the tape. we got a lot podcast. of things to look into. Quick saying <laughs> that. We're, we joke around, but this is remarkable. I mean, so many things to take away, if it, uh, including Giorgio Chiellini approaching this as this first jaunt outside of Italy like a, a excited school kid. That's pretty exciting. Very fresh perspective. Will Coons, one of the real good guys here in this league and certainly with this club. Make sure you rate, review, share, download, subscribe to the podcast. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll be back again. We'll be recapping the Seattle game the next time you see you. I'm actually off on vacation. I'm off on vacation. So I'll see you in a couple Don't weeks. worry, guys. I'm going to get Jordan Harvey. Jordan Harvey. Everyone's clapping on the other side of that camera. Stop. Bring it down a notch. I'll be back in a couple weeks. Have a good one. Oh, yes! They knocked on the door!